Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video where I'm going to go through the sorts of things that go on inside your engine if we use stale fuel. Now, it can have several symptoms. It can sometimes require us to need more choke on an engine and sometimes it can flood the engine. But I'll explain how things go here from the fuel tank right through the carburetor and into the engine. And I shall show how combustion occurs using stale fuel, etc. And then this is how this system works to the best of my knowledge and beliefs over the years I've been working and repairing engines with this kind of problem. So let's get started. And I'll begin by laying out a diagram here so we can see everything systematically from the fuel tank, fuel lines, through to the carburetor and through to the engine. And so we'll start off then. We've got the fuel tank here and we've got some fuel in it there. We've got a fuel filter. Now I've made it quite large here just to explain the point a bit and it's not to true scale of course but we've got a, a fuel line coming off there and down the bottom here we've got the carburetor. This is a four stroke carburetor for now. I'll just explain the four stroke for now. And then we've got an engine attached to the carburetor. And down here we've got the inlet manifold that allows all the fuel and air to come out of the carburetor into the engine and it wouldn't normally be this shape. This is more like a cone shape. The reason I've had to do this is because I've had to make the carburetor to a larger scale than it would be for this size of engine, just so I can show what's going on through the carburetor. That's the only reason. So these two here are not to scale. But what I generally do if I'm checking for stale fuel, well, one of the first things I actually do when I start an engine, regardless of how long the engine's been there, is I'll just take the fuel can lid off and have a look down there and see if the fuel is of a dark colour or if there's like a stale smell to it. We know what fresh fuel smells like so if they've got that stale smell, that weak smell. Of course I'm not saying we should go sniffing at the fuel, we know that's dangerous, I'm just saying that we should notice how the fuel smells when we take a look inside the tank. Because what happens is from the moment we actually buy fuel and it's nice and fresh it's actually starting to evaporate away. There's the combustible material, the reactive substance of the material that starts to evaporate out into the environment. So what happens there is over time, over a matter of weeks, and I don't recommend using fuel over six weeks, but what happens is the more that that combustible material actually evaporates away, it leaves behind a less combustible gum type material. So what we're left with is a fluid that's much thicker and it hasn't got the same octane rating if you like, it hasn't got the same combustibility about it. And although there's less combustibility about this fluid that's left behind, there will be some, providing it's not too old. And of course, when we try and start the engine, if we haven't checked the fuel here and we have got stale fuel in, then we're going to get all this fuel now going through the system and we don't really want that. It's going to go through the fuel filter, down the fuel lines, into the carburetor, and then it'll come out the carburetor as usual, obviously, go into the engine and try and be combusted. But as it's going through all them areas, as it's going through the carburetor, etc., remember this is a thicker substance and we don't really want that in there. And over time, that can actually clog the carburetor and cause problems. There's a direct effect of this actual stale fuel inside the cylinder there. Because as we mentioned earlier, this stale fuel's lack of combustibility means that it's not going to let this engine run efficiently. And let's take a look why. Pistons come right down now on the induction stroke and now it's on its way back up and it's on the compression stroke and it's compressing that stale fuel in with the air and now we've got the spark occurring. But the difference now is with the combustion is that because that reactive component's missing or most of it's missing from the fuel then it doesn't catch fire and combust as well. And so that means now, because of that, there isn't the same amount of explosion inside above the piston there, forcing it down at the rate it needs to be forced down at. And so it's going to lower now at a substandard rate. It's going to lower down the cylinder much slower as a result. Obviously not this slow because this is in slow motion, but the point I'm making is that this is the source of the problem. We haven't got the combustibility there and the movement of the piston to what we need it to be. And in the wake of the the substandard combustion, there's going to be some fuel still in with the exhaust fumes because not all of it will be combusted because as I've said, it can't be combusted because it's not combustible part of it. So the piston will rise again and force out those exhaust fumes with the stale fuel that hasn't been burnt. But remember, because this piston 
during the last combustion wasn't forced down hard enough as it should have been it was forced down at a substandard rate then it's going to turn at the bottom on the crank and come back up and it's going to come up at a substandard rate as a result and so when the engine cycles through its strokes and gets round to combusting again then we're going to have the same thing there a substandard rate of piston movement and it's just going to be a vicious circle as the engine tries its best to run and keep going now because this stale fuel is only partly combustible and the fact that it has some combustibility but not much depending on how old it is and that the engine needs a good amount of combustible material of course then we're going to need a greater volume of this stale fuel to come into the cylinder so through the carburetor and into the engine and combust in order to get an amount that will help run the engine as best it possibly can and chances are it won't run perfectly at that but what I tend to find is that if this fuel hasn't gone too stale, so if a lot of that combustible material has evaporated away but not gone too stale, then that's when I've found that it will run, as I've said, not perfectly. If it goes a little bit further than that and a bit more of it's evaporated away over a few more weeks, then I tend to find that it will run at this, providing I can adjust the carburetor to allow more fuel to go into the engine. And you get a gauge of how much fuel you should put in and shouldn't put in when you start turning these fuel adjustment screws. I haven't actually shown one here, but I have already got videos here on YouTube that explains how adjustments are made to carburetors in order to give them more fuel or less fuel. So do check them out if you can. To get to the point then, so if we start an engine then with stale fuel, obviously we're going to turn on the choke. And then of course, there's going to be a vacuum building up inside the induction tube there, as we've already mentioned. And we're going to get a large amount of fuel coming through to start the engine. And then when we remove the choke, when the engine's got a bit warm, we find out then that the engine isn't running quite right. So we put the choke back on and the engine runs again. And we can see now why. Because in this case, where we need a higher volume of fuel because we've got less reactive component and need more of it, this is what the actual choke's doing for us. It's getting more of that fuel in. So ultimately then, if the engine's given off that symptom of only being able to run on choke, then this of course can mean that we have got stale fuel in the tank. This is the kind of symptoms I have seen in the past. But let me just mention now though, when I say stale fuel, I mean not really, really stale, like a year old or something like that. Because if we try and start an engine on very, very stale fuel, then all we're going to do is flood the engine because it won't combust at all. So when I say stale fuel, I'm talking a matter of sort of five or six weeks or more where it is combustible, but not as combustible. And just for clarity then, this is why stale fuel can cause more than one symptom. This is why it can cause the engine to only run on choke. Or on the other scenario, this is why it can cause flooding for an engine. And in another scenario where this fuel's going off steadily over time, we might think it's the carburetor because we're forever tuning the carburetor each time we have to use the machine. So if it's been a period of a few weeks since we've last used the machine, we tend to find we're tuning it up all the time and we think it's the carburetor blocked when in fact it's sometimes stale fuel that's just going more stale, making it so that you have to keep adjusting your carburetor. And what I'm trying to say here, I'm not trying to get you to run any engine on stale fuel at all. I'm just saying that these are the symptoms and this is what can happen. If I was you, I would replace the fuel straight away and always, always run it on as fresh a fuel as possible. If you can't keep fresh fuel in a can for long enough because you have to store it, then use a fuel stabilizer. That's what I do. Because a good fuel stabilizer will keep it nice and fresh and keep all that reactive substance within the fuel for up to two years. So the only answer to stale fuel then is to safely discard it, of course, and then clean out your fuel lines, your fuel tank, your carburetor, and all the areas that the fuel goes in, so that when you put fresh fuel in, everything should be okay. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this basic explanation as to how stale fuel can affect an engine. I'm sure there's more to stale fuel than what I've explained here. I just wanted to get the basics across, but if you have benefited from this video, then please do like and subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.